What did you think was normal about your body until someone pointed out that it wasn't? I thought I was bad at running because my throat would seize up and get painful whenever I ran for more than a minute. I mentioned this to my doctor when I was 30. Turns out I have asthma. Found out I had asthma when I blacked out after walking up some stairs. 10 out of 10. Same here, but I was walking down them carrying a heavy box. Thankfully, it was just a momentary blackout, so I didn't fall down the stairs, but it was close. My parents knew I'd been born with asthma due to breathing in fluid while in utero. It was really bad when I was a kid. I'd wake up in coughing fits and have to sit and use an albuterol breathing machine. These days, it's well managed with a once a day puff from a Symbicort inhaler. I still keep an emergency albuterol inhaler on me just in case though, sometimes my breathing will get tight just from sneezing a bunch. I had this spent so much on asthma, and still would need the emergency inhaler on the regular. Our kid was diagnosed with gluten intolerance when we had him tested, had headaches and stomach aches, got rid of all the gluten in the house, total cereal and all the other whole grains, BS I was told was healthier. It turns out I don't have allergies and asthma all the time. As the years have gone by, it has just gotten better and better. I carry the emergency inhaler still, but only use it if I have flu, which always moves into lungs, which I suspect are scarred from the asthma for so long. I take no preventative meds anymore. I rarely need Kleenex. Try it for a few days. The relief of going gluten-free was clear in two weeks. I once took part in a study as a paid participant. The doctors used ultrasound probes to examine the blood vessels on my face. They commented on how strange my face's blood vessels were. They struggled and puzzled a little while examining my face. Then they handed me more cash and asked whether I would be willing to donate my body after I died to a medical study. They were polite and respectful throughout the whole process. They just seemed excited. Edit. They didn't tell me what's wrong, so I don't know either. And my face looks perfectly normal, at least from the outside that I had eight wisdom teeth grow into the extra space in the back of my jaw, two for each side, top and bottom, that all grew in just fine after 20, only to find out on my last trip to the dentist that I have eight more growing in sideways. The normal amount of wisdom teeth is four, not 16. Some of the women in my family grow a third set of teeth in their 30s. My great aunt had a nearly perfect set, only one came in crooked, but my mom's sister had hers come in next to her adult teeth, so she has two rows in some places, like a shark. My mom got a couple extra, but they were pulled, and I haven't gotten any yet, though I got to keep all my wisdom teeth, and they didn't. The first year of menstruating, I had intensely painful periods and severe constipation. The periods would last two weeks, with two weeks in between each one. Everyone told me things would calm down and even out. Then one night, at a friend's sleepover, I was in so much pain that I was sobbing on the bathroom floor. My parents rushed me to the hospital. Everything I was describing, pain-wise, made it sound like I was in labor. But I was 14, and still very much a virgin. After a week of tests and painkillers, they finally figured out the issue. I then had surgery to open up my second uterus and cervix, which had been sealed shut by a membrane. I had been having periods for a year and had built up like two liters worth of old blood in my sealed second uterus. So once that was drained out and I was put on major antibiotics, I gotta go home and tell all my friends that I had two uteruses. I was also born with one kidney. Not sure if that's related, but I sure am a mess down there. Um, hello, person who went through exactly the same thing as me. This was so surreal reading this. I have never met anyone else who has even heard of this, let alone been through it. But this is me. I was 13 and having these same kinds of pains. So sorry you went through this too. God, it was awful. But there was no blood for me. My membrane blockage was complete. They had to perform surgery to remove it after finally figuring out my body had been trying to have a period for a few months. They thought it was a tumor at first after an ultrasound because I had an extra uterus floating around in there. And both my uteri were also huge from the backed up blood. And I also have just one kidney. 
I guess the one teensy silver lining is that I never had that experience of starting my first period somewhere awkward, like the middle of class. I was in a hospital anyway. So glad you shared, and I'm so glad we're both okay. I think we both would have died super young if we had been born a long time ago. Also, saw some of the questions people were posing below about getting pregnant in both uteri. I do think it's possible for some with this condition. I am choosing not to have kids because it would be very high risk. It's hard on one kidney, and I've been told one uterus is small and not strong enough. So if I got pregnant in the wrong way, it would be heartbreaking. Just too many risks. I have a double uvula. That little hangy thing in the back of your throat. Mine looks like a ball sack. I thought that's just what they looked like, cause like, how often do you look in people's throats? I remember seeing cartoons as a kid where they'd zoom in on a character's mouth when they are screaming or something. And I just thought the artists were lazy, drawing a simple droopy line. But no, that's what most people's looks like. When I was in my 20s, I went to the doctor for something unrelated and she checked my throat and just said, huh, you have a double uvula, neat. I went home and told my roommates and they all had to look in my mouth. I thought they would think the doctor was the weirdo, but they were all shocked. I'll never forget one saying, you've got balls in your throat. I have one too. My dentist I've been seeing for nearly six years gets so excited every single time I visit. It lights up her day no matter what. That your brain never stopping is not normal. It's actually a sign of hyperactivity. The first time I took meds and I only thought of one thing at a time, overwhelming. I have ADHD and OCD. It wasn't diagnosed until my late 30s. When we got my medication right, I sobbed for half an hour straight. My husband was freaking out, asking what was wrong. All I could say was, it's so quiet. Early 30s checking in. The more posts like this I see, the more I identify with that meme, either people with ADHD need to stop being so relatable or I need to go to a doctor, LOL. Sadly, where I am, both doctors I've had the courage to bring this up to decided that I couldn't possibly have ADHD ad because I've never experienced bouts of hyperactivity. Thought I had great vision. Until I tried glasses and found that everything was so much sharper and more vivid. Apparently my left eye has a vision defect, but my right eye learned to compensate so I never realized. I remember playing Skyrim and thinking they made it too sharp. In reality, mountains that far away didn't look that sharp. Didn't they know how to add a blur or fog shader based on distance? A week after that, I happened to get my eyes checked. Turned out I'm nearsighted. Mountains do look like Skyrim's. Skyrim was more real than my reality. Cataplexy. I lose the ability to grip, hold things, chew, sometimes even stand when laughing. Basically, my muscles shit the bed whenever I start laughing too hard. Me, my sister, and my dad have it. My sister has even dropped her children because of it. Don't worry more of a gradual release than a full-blown drop and no one was hurt. I grew up thinking it was entirely normal and my mind was blown when I found out it was not. I asked the next 10 people I saw, friends, co-workers, drug dealer, if they got weak while they were laughing and they looked at me like I was crazy. My labia is long on both sides. I vividly remember going to the pediatrician and having my doctor say, I've never seen anything like this. I was 12. Now I know it's normal, but I spent my entire preteen and teen years horrified that there was something wrong with me, that any guy seeing it would think I was weird or gross. I am not kidding. I lived in fear that I was the only female in the world who had a longer labia. Thanks, pediatrician. It wasn't until I went to my first OBGYN appointment, where I was crying asking about it, that I was told, this is very normal. Edit. I can't believe my most upvoted comment was about one of my former deepest insecurities. Let's go Reddit. To answer some questions, the pediatrician was a female. She examined me because I told my mom that I thought there was something wrong down there. I had watched this Dane Cook comedy special where he made fun of girls with long labias and was traumatized. My mom worked at the pediatrician's office and thought she was doing the right thing by having the pediatrician examine me. She thought a pediatrician would say, yes, this is normal. 
to all the other women who shared how this also made them feel terrible. Thank you for sharing your experience. There is no one perfect body type, face shape, nail bed, hair length. You are all beautiful. I knew I always had a stuffy nose but didn't think much about it. Got onto medicine that finally helped and my nose cleared up a bit and I could smell a little better in high school. Didn't realize how badly it had affected my sense of smell until college though. I had a chemistry lab where we had to determine the scent of some liquids. It's been too long for me to remember what they were. I couldn't smell anything until I breathed through my mouth. I was suddenly able to figure out each one. That's still how I smell things. Edit. So I wrote this and then went to bed and it exploded while I was asleep. So here are the answers to two of the most popular things. My doctors are aware I am like this and my septum has been checked. It's not off enough to cause the problem. I just have a long list of incredibly annoying allergies that cause the issue. For example, I'm allergic to just about every green plant. Always check with your doctor about what will specifically help you. But I have to take an OTC allergy pill year round. But if I take the same one for too long, it stops working. I rotate every three months through Zyrtec, Allegra and Claritin. I also take Demista Nasal spray. Singular is technically for my asthma, but it seems to help open my nasal passage. And it isn't perfect, but I can breathe through my nose most of the day now. This is the opposite. You know when you're breathing like normal, and suddenly when you inhale, you get this sharp pain in one side of your chest, at the ribs behind your pectoral muscle. And every time you try to inhale further, it comes back, then goes away entirely after a few minutes. Yeah, that's called precordial catch syndrome. Doctors don't know exactly what causes it, but the running theory is that a nerve near your ribs occasionally gets pinched when you inhale, and it takes a few moments for your body to dampen the signal from that nerve. It's very common and does not indicate any underlying or dangerous medical issues. I have perfect pitch. Somehow, a discussion about it never happened, so I went through 2.5 years of band learning notes and tuning the way I thought everyone else did. To make a long story short, I found out when my dad was trying to play a tune by ear, kept missing a note, and I finally yelled at him that he should be playing X note, which led to my parents freaking out and quizzing me, and me freaking out because I thought they were playing dumb. It took months and coming across a National Geographic article before it fully sank in that I had an entirely different relationship with sound than anyone in my social circle. I thought feeling your heart beating was normal, even in a sedentary state. Turns out I had a heart murmur, patent ductus arteriosus, and didn't find out until I was 30. All those years of multiple doctors listening to my heart, and finally a doctor detected it. After I had the procedure to close it, I told my dad I feel great. I don't feel my heart beating in my chest. He was shocked I lived like that for so long. I thought it meant I was alive and well. ETA. I didn't mean to freak y'all out. To clarify, I could feel my heart pounding lying down or just sitting and could hear it too. Think of how you can feel and hear it while working out or when you're anxious. Mine was like that 24-7 at a normal heart rate, and I thought it was normal. Many can see and feel it if you focus. I mean, it was always noticeable, even when I wasn't focusing on it. I constantly have to flex my muscles, not in the douchey check me out ladies kind of way, but in a more frustrating I need to move this muscle in the next three seconds or I will feel like I am being tortured kind of way. Constantly rotating my shoulders, flexing my shoulder blades, neck, arms, wrists, ankles, legs, etc. makes it hard to sit still or sleep. Only seriously noticed when I slept with my first partner, who was very confused as to why I wouldn't stop twisting and flexing for at least two hours before falling asleep. I just figured everyone got that feeling. Being under a weighted blanket, feeling my arm or leg fall asleep, both feel like utter torture and will make me scream and write about. Would love to know what the hell this is and how I deal with it, because so far I have no clue. If I'm sort of tuned out or focusing on something and I hear a sound behind me or to one side, I can literally feel my ears attempt to turn toward the sound like many animals do, such as cats. My ears don't actually move around, but there's some automated reflex that tries to do it. I mentioned it to my wife in an innocent statement that began with, 
You know how you can feel your ears try to move to pinpoint a sudden sound. And she looked at me as if I have six eyes. I haven't found anyone else since then who knows what the hell I'm talking about. Had a teacher call the mole on my cheek a beauty mark. Hadn't realized having such a prominent mole was remarkable enough to have a special name. And I have never ever thought my mole was beautiful. I remember a girl turning around in her seat on the bus, stare at me, then said, you know your mole has hair growing, right? No, no, I didn't. Now I pluck my mole every week or so. Thanks, Brittany, or whatever her name is. Edit. I've read every comment below, and it warms my heart to know there are dozens of us. Dozens. Mole pluckers unite. Also, I'm keeping my hairy beauty mark unless it turns cancerous, but no shade to those who have or will remove their face moles. Since I was a kid, I was aware of the running commentary in my head. My mind is consistently thinking about one thing and then bouncing off to something else, talking over something that happened last week or running through an interaction I expect to have tomorrow. I will zone out mid-conversation and have even been in meetings where I miss chunks of things because my mind has gone off on what I need to do when I get home. I asked some friends and family if they experienced the same, and they gave me a side eye. Apparently, an inner voice narrating your day is not normal. I can't imagine what it is like to have a quiet mind when people say they can just sit there and have nothing going on inside. I never understood why people were able to tolerate heat so easily, or why they would complain about sweating. One day, I came across the term anhydrosis, and a light bulb went off. Basically, I don't sweat enough, so I'm crap at regulating temperature. I just get dizzy and nauseous if I overheat instead. My mom and son are the same way, so it didn't seem all that weird to me. In my late 30s, I was diagnosed with a minor Arnold Chiari malformation. It is a genetic condition from birth which causes increased pressure on the brainstem, which can lead to a lot of weird things. My wife was reading up on the condition and asked if I had any problems sneezing. I thought this was an odd question because I have a lot of allergies, so I said no. She asked what it felt like when I sneezed. I said, you know, your vision goes white and you get dizzy, worried about falling down, sometimes an instant headache, but it passes in a second or two. Her eyes got wide like saucers, and her mouth dropped a little. I remember saying, now that I say that out loud, I'm guessing that is not normal? Her reply was, not normal at all. Sympathy pains. If I see someone that has been through a bad time or they have a disfiguring disease, it makes me have as dull ache in that area. Also, when I fall or have an injury, the area will feel very warm right after. I was in my late 40s and my friend said she never experienced anything like that. Strawberry legs. I have a ton of small dark spots on my legs and I thought that's just what legs look like. Apparently hair follicle or clogged pores that are exposed to air after shaving your legs can oxidize and turn dark. There are even treatments to get rid of it because they can be a major insecurity, but I've never bothered. My small lips. I know, thin lips are pretty common. I never thought twice about my lips until I was 17 at my boyfriend's house. I had told my boyfriend something, and puckered apparently. And his sister bursts into laughter, then my boyfriend joins in. I had no clue what was funny then, my boyfriend said, it's her lips, right? And they kept laughing. I was mortified. Anyway, now I'm 22 and I see there was really nothing wrong with my lips. It was the wrong choice in boyfriend that was the problem. I don't know what it's called, but some other women on my dad's side have this too. If I'm ever woken up unnaturally like an alarm or something, I'll be unable to walk without losing my balance and starting to fall to one side. I only ever walk close to walls and furniture so I can lean fall against them. And I thought it was relatively normal, even if everyone didn't have it. Edit. Actually, I was in the hospital and stayed overnight recently. A nurse woke me up to take my blood pressure and she was concerned because it was low apparently. So maybe there's something wrong with me where I have low blood pressure when I'm woken up. My tolerance for alcohol. I went years of heavy alcoholic drinking without anyone realizing I was doing it. I just didn't get sloppy, slurry, or unable to do normal tasks. 
I was drinking 8-10 drinks a day. It was easy to lie to myself and think I had no problem because I was excelling at my job, getting certifications and licenses, and generally being a good member of society. I never understood why some folks had three or four drinks and were out of it. It all finally catches up to you though. I always kind of knew it wasn't normal, but I didn't realize how bad it was until I finally went to rehab and experienced withdrawal that included auditory and visual hallucinations and shakes that even the meds didn't fully control. To this day, I have acquaintances that have no idea I was blasted every time I talked with them. A lot of alcoholics say this, but their friends and family say, we knew something was wrong but never said anything. My friends and family were almost doubtful when I told them I had a problem. My wife figured it out first, but not because of how I acted, because she saw the evidence in the form of empty vodka handles hidden before I could toss them. I truly flew under the radar for maybe years of being constantly drunk day to night. In those three years, I had a kid got promoted at my job twice, had hobbies, got licensed for my profession in two different states without anyone knowing I was drinking from morning to night. Like I said, it's easy to lie to yourself that way. Edit. If anyone is in that situation, definitely DM me. Bright lights at night being way too intense. Wife and I were driving one night and I started talking about it. I looked over and saw a large sign that was lit up with blue lights. I said, See like that, it's so bright you can't even read what the sign says. My wife, without missing a beat, goes, it says eyeglass world. And that's how I found out I have an astigmatism. I used to have an open bite. The top and bottom teeth at the front of my mouth didn't come together properly because of the way the teeth at the very back of my mouth touched. Even when I was just trying to grin for a picture, my top and bottom teeth had so much of a gap between them that it looked like my mouth was slightly open. I also had a lot of trouble eating. I really had to tear at my food because of the gap, and I only had about four teeth in the back that could be used effectively for chewing. I would get a lot of backhanded comments from people about how my mouth was always open in pictures and how long it took me to eat, but I really didn't know there was something wrong. About eight years ago, I started grinding my teeth really hard at night, and they really hurt. I ended up going to an orthodontist, and he was shocked that none of the dentists that I had seen in the past said anything. I got some Invisaligns, and now my mouth closes normally. That I was only able to breathe out of one nostril. Went in for a checkup, and when the doctor asked if there was anything else, I said, Yeah, you know, I can only breathe out of one nostril. Is that normal? He said, Of course not, and asked how long that has been happening, and I said, Well, all my life, I've only ever been able to breathe out of one nostril. It turns out I have a deviated septum and just overall fricked up sinuses. Shortly after that visit, I saw an NT specialist and was able to open up both of my nostrils using super strong Flonase. Let me tell you, the experience of effortlessly breathing was unmatched. I have been chasing that high ever since.